Hello and welcome to my next video on my favourite topic of biology, evolution. So some definitions to start off with. Variation, the differences between species and individuals. Simple. You have interspecies variation, that is between species. So the variation between, let's say, us and monkeys. And intraspecies variation, the variation within the species, so between you and your mum. There are two main types of variation. The first is continuous variation. This is when there is a full range of intermediate phenotypes. Phenotypes are the physical characteristics that are shown. You also have a genotype, which is the different genes you have. So for eye colour, there, there are two genes which form an allele. Now, you have a recessive gene and a dominant gene. If you have dominant gene, you get brown eyes. If you have two recessive genes, you get blue. So the genotype, let's say, of blue eyes would be double recessive. Little r, little r is how we write it. And the phenotype would be blue eyes. Now this is caused by many genes, because obviously that's a bad example for continuous variation, but um, it's caused, if something like height, it's caused by many genes and the environment. So height. If you have tall parents, you'll likely be tall yourself. But if you don't eat much, you're not going to grow as much. So it's caused by both. Often many people are close to the mean, and this is obviously height here is a normally distributed curve. If you do maths, you'll know what that is. It basically means that it is symmetrical with a mean, mode, and median in the middle. And examples of this are height, weight, number of leaves on a plant. There's many different intermediates. You can be any range from a set value. So let's say for height, it's off of, a, of an average person who doesn't suffer some genetic disease like dwarfism or any of those. It's, you know, be anywhere between like six foot six foot six and five well yeah five foot so a bit more than that but anyway the other one discontinuous variation this is when there's discrete groups of phenotypes so there's own there's no intermediate or very rare it's either this or this so eye color you've either got brown eyes or you've got blue you don't have an in in the middle really and this is caused by one or two genes so in this case eye color has got one gene um, and so you have you know, in this case, blood group, four discrete categories. You can't have O and A blood. You have O or A blood. And examples, sex or gender. You can't be male and female normally. Um, blood group, colour for plants. Let's say, you, you know, plants you know, are yellow or purple. You don't get, you don't get a whole range of colours of one individual species of plant. And resistance, so antibiotic resistance, it... You either have it or you don't. So, factors that affect variation. There are two, genetic and environmental. Genetic, that's genes and alleles. So the genotype results in variation in the phenotype. So different, different individuals have different genes. And these genes will be passed on and form variation. And they're inherited. And once you've got it, it doesn't change. You don't start off with blue eyes and suddenly you have brown eyes. It doesn't happen. Environmental, so this is your lifestyle, how much you eat, exercise. This does change over your life and it's not inherited. Now, examples of genetic, well, we've, genetic factors are stuff like eye color, blood group. Environmental factors are accent or tattoos because um, you, you get a tattoo and that's variation. Don't like tattoos personally, but uh, okay. Or they can be both, so height. As I said earlier, it's if you have tall parents, you will have tall generally have tall children. But diet and nutrition affects how much you grow. So, what does variation lead to? It leads to adaptation. An adaptation is a feature that enhances survival and long-term reproductive success. There are three types of adaptations: behavioural, physiological, and anat anatomical. Behavioural is ways an organism acts increases the chance of survival. Physiological is processed inside an organism's body that increases its chance of survival. And anatomical is structural features of an organism's body that helps it survive. So, behavioural ones. For example, um, some animals play dead so they won't get attacked. That's a behavioural adaptation. Physiological. Hibernating. Organisms hibernate because it lowers their metabolism and conserves energy when there isn't much food around. And anatomical, for example, um, hedgehogs have a have a spikes, you know, 
spikes on their back which will protect them but also that combines with a behavioral adaptation so they roll into a ball when a predator comes that's behavioral and then the predator can't eat them because of the spines anatomical um, an example you do need to know about actually is um, xerophytes they are um, plants in the basically that live in the desert not much water and if you have done unit one you'll know about them so you you have variation these create adaptations what next it leads to evolution and the mechanism behind evolution is natural selection which I'll tell you about in a minute so evolution essentially this is how it works and this is how you want to answer the question whenever it says you know how did resistance come about or how did this change in a species come about it's evolution that's what you say often one marks given for just saying natural selection but this is actually what happens a random mutation occurs which causes variation this causes an adaptation this increases the individual's chance of survival so it can reproduce and pass on its genes this occurs over many generations until the whole species has that adaptation so natural selection Charles Darwin and some and someone else called Al Alfred Russell Wallace came up with the theory of evolution now sadly Wallace isn't really talked about much in evolution because Charles Darwin got the fame for it but they both did their fair enough of work but you need to know about Charles Darwin he went to the Galapagos Islands on the Beagle and saw many things he made four main observations offspring generally appear similar to their parents no two individuals are identical organisms produce large numbers of offspring and populations stay fairly stable in size and he came up with a theory so individuals show variation there's a struggle to survive better adapted individuals survive and pass on their genes and over time a number of changes may give rise to a new species and you can see how these link Let's say, right. so offspring generally appear similar to their parents their genes have been passed on no two individuals are identical this because it shows variation organisms produce large numbers of offspring which means there is a struggle to survive and populations stay fairly stable in size this is because better adapted individuals that show variation survive and pass on their genes now this leads to speciation the formation of new species two types of speciation you need to know about allopatric and sympatric Allopatric is formed by geolog geographic separation. So, for example, um, mountains formed or a, a land mass separated by, you know, and becomes islands. Now, this prevents breeding and often will create slightly different climates. So, let's say on one island there might be a lot of, um, a lot of bananas, on the other one might be apples. This will change. This will means that the organisms on those islands will adapt to eat bananas or adapt to eat. Um, apples and it generally provides a different habitat so they adapt and evolve and eventually if they ever met again they would have so many different changes in their structure behavior and physiological um, structure that they would no longer be able to interbreed to produce fertile offsprings thus making them new species the other one sympatric this is reproductive separation separation so if two two organisms can't reproduce then it provides means that they will well they can't breed um, now this can f be formed by biochemical change or a physical change or a behavioral change so for example let's say um, one animal one individual creates a new dance a bird creates a new dance to attract a mate only half the mates like it the other half are not interested instantly creating separation and if that organism that dances um, mate it will pass on its knowledge of the dance so l more more organisms will have that dance attracting only half the population of females so the other half won't breed creating a barrier that's sympatric or it might be a change in the you know structure of the genitalia or something like that evidence for evolution three main ways fossils dna molecular evidence fossils these are these are found in rocks and show gradual changes of species over many years and it shows intermediate so you might be able to find a really early film of the horse 
and a really late formed horse and one in the middle. It shows the intermediates or you might find many examples of the horse over many millions of years and showing the slow changes. And also fossils can be dated showing when the changes occurred. DNA changes in the base sequence. The more similar the sequence of amino acids in DNA and protein, well DNA, um, the more closely related you are. Um, and organisms that have more similar characteristics tend to have more similar DNA. Same with molecular evidence, proteins, amino acid sequence, and also a chemical called cytosome C. The more similar it is in different organisms, the more closely related they are, and the more recently they evolved. Now, an example you need to know about antibiotic resistance. This has occurred in um, bacteria, which will no longer be killed off by, by antibiotics. This formed by natural selection and evolution. Now, you take your course of antibiotics, some some bacteria develop a random mutation which means they will they are antibiotic resistant they survive pass on their genes and then over many generations until you've got antibiotic resistant colonies but also it can occur if if you have a um, course of antibiotics to say two weeks and you take them for one week some of the stronger ones will survive now they could be killed if you took it for the full two weeks but if they don't, if you don't take for one week, then the strong ones have survived, they'll pass on their genes and will provide stronger antibiotics. Now, what does this do for humans? It makes it hard to treat diseases, which means it can kill people. And if a whole colony becomes antibiotic resistant, you have to create new drugs. And that's time that creates time or well, cost time and money. And it also occurs for pesticides and insects and other organisms, but it's the same theory. So conclusion. Variation is the differences between species. Variation leads to adaptations which will benefit an organism, making, meaning it will survive and pass on its genes. This is natural selection which leads to evolution. If evolution occurs, it creates speciation and formation of new species. The evidence for this is fossils, um, molecular evidence and DNA. And an example is resistance of antibiotics to antibiotics and pesticides, insecticides, herbicides. So yeah. I've done these two videos quite quickly to make sure you get them and um, I hope they helped. As usual, any questions, just ask. Feel free to like and comment or yeah, do whatever you want or message me. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for listening and goodbye.